feel that whole rave scene was a product of, of the Margaret Thatcher years, basically. All them years of repression, oppression, the 80s in England were shit. It was very capitalist, you know, yeah. She was trying to make everyone buy their houses, you know, the work thing. and There's nothing underground, oh, it's just horrible. And that's why, so, you know, when the rave thing happened in 89, it was like, oh, yeah, wicked, let's go. One night, uh, I'd be in a pub, and this guy would walk up to us and say, do you want to come to a party? And suddenly you'd find yourself in a room with 2,000 people of all cultures, all races, all styles, you know, suddenly dancing to this new acid house beat that's fresh from Chicago. It's no longer pop music. It's no longer the three minute sale, you know. It's actually a, a programmed voyage for the mind. This is it. And I was working in a, in a PA hire shop. So each week, People were coming in and hiring their amps and PAs and stuff, and I would hear about all these different parties going on. And for me, the ideal way was like um, outside with a really big rig and all your friends on the dance floor. That is for me. This acid party sort of thing turned into like a new wave of psychedelic. And that was the thing that really blew my head off. Why was this new electronic music so different from all the other electronic musics I'd heard before? The fact was, was it was just a drum machine and a bass line, and the way the bass line moved was completely different to anything I'd heard before. It wasn't moving in the sense of harmony and melody, it was going round on a loop. And that loop would change not in pitch, but in frequency. And that was something revolutionary for me anyway. Which is the most basic principle of all of this is to clean yourself from a week at a work. But after that, there are many levels to that. How far do you want to go with it? And that's where I saw Mark as such a great uh, catalyst for all of that, because he was so clear about that. There was a real buzz in the air, you know, about this kind of new place, but it was all very commercial. So the one thing that was missing was the connection with the free space, because there is no free space. Every single square centimetre is under control. It's very important to have these social centres where people can come and meet and network and exchange ideas, because without people doing that, no contact. Mark, he um, had had this kind of vision. He went off in this kind of mad trance for nine days where he got completely spiralled by this, this, this cosmic nurse. And, um, and completely spoiled me and Simon and his brother Zander and then all the rest of, of everybody. It's strange how it happened. I had this job in a printing place and on the wall there was a picture of uh, this fossil which is a spiral ammonite and I was just experimenting on this, you know, and going into infinity on the photocopy and out and in. And suddenly this kind of uh, very strange, you know, connection, this very strange sort of revelation, if you like, of this image and what it meant. All connecting. The spiral, the perfect image to connect through all points. Got a small sound system together and we began to put parties on. And then after that, it was all, uh, it was rave on, basically. World things are connected, this we know. Now is the time to let yourself go to free mankind from the negative force. Let's see a positive influence, because positive thinking bears no hate. Now is the time to evaluate, to connect your body and soul as one. The fourth dimension has already begun. I go to this first ever Spiral Tribe party and it's like back, you know, this acid house music, you know. For me, being already a bit of a mushroom uh, adept at that time, uh, it was perfect. We're all just going, wow! It's mad, cosmic, spiral trip. We'd all be just totally spiralled. It's wicked with the music and everything else, you know, you're just going, yeah, we can change the world. In hindsight, I think we were very utopian, you know what I mean? And that's the spirit of those times. Anything goes, anything can happen, and we're going to push the button, and why not revolution? We let down all the barriers. We allowed it to have its own life. That was kind of difficult, you can imagine, but incredible at the same time. It was a very hard life living 
on the road, doing the parties continually. Each individual person starts to realise that it's less important to get caught on the material and it's less important to get the career and the job and all these kind of things and much more important to discover what you are. Just being free in thinking and dancing. The first one was Longstock. It was the displaced Stonehenge. They didn't want these people coming into Wiltshire and occupying the area around Stonehenge. It became a, a spiritual realisation. We were out in the nature, in the environment, and we were going to continue to whatever end. We realised that we would not return to the lives that we were living the day before. That was a key moment of no return. Wake up. for that was kind of just a compilation of uh, you know festivals and parties and people and stuff that was um, before the revolution there was I go it's had a bit of a more of a direction and we wanted to kind of have the tribe and and we had a mini bus and we just drove around all these places in London and just filmed people I suppose when I wrote the, the lyrics I don't I didn't think about writing them they just came and it, it all kind of happened. I think the first bit, I kind of stole a bit from uh, American Indian uh, writing. You know, all things are connected. Um, the, all things are connected, as we know. Now is the time to let yourself grow, to free mankind from the negative force. Let's see a positive influence. Uh, our brothers and sisters alike that two share a planet sometimes I, I think of the lyrics now and they kind of mean more to me now than they they did then but uh, I've I definitely had a kind of conflict because Spiral Tribe was faceless and all of a sudden there was a voice on the record and I felt quite uncomfortable with the attention that that, that brought because I felt it was going against the facelessness and ego. to get trapped by politics. Because if you fight politics with politics, it's fighting fire with fire. It's on the, way. the best way to combat this was in a creative sense. Me, I was doing backdrops. This whole crew of people who'd spent, I don't know how much time, painting the walls and making these little, each room was a different vibe. We had quite a strong graphic that we, you know, we worked hard at stickering London. That people feel comfortable when they see something familiar. Take uh, an area, a large empty warehouse, and to have these new symbols of what this free space represented, the more minimal, the better. Spiral drive. 
when you then saw the symbol again, it represented that. The message, the message is in the music. music. And if it, represent, if it was successful, it represented that free space. Fucking noise, you know? And the name Spiral Tribe was kind of resonating around parties. And as I say, it just started from doing really small little squatted events that just became massive, huge, totally illegal parties with the police following us all around the countryside every weekend. And that ended up in uh, Castle Moor where we all got arrested. We got a telephone call from Bedlam. Uh, what are you doing hiding in the forest? Blah, blah, blah. So we jumped back in the buses and got in the trucks. We had a party there for a few days. Like, we were surrounded by these, these uh, police. You hear this signal? And they attacked us. It was meant to shake you up, to disturb you psychologically. See what they're doing to us? As well as physically. <laughs> so we left from here. We were chased by a police helicopter out. You have no escape. And all the travellers and everybody just being chased around the country by the police. It turned out that there was a, a conspiracy to stop Spiral Tribe doing what they were doing. Has the operation gone as you expected? Yes, I think so. The chief superintendent pulled me aside on the steps. This person's not allowed to talk to me, and he just whispered in my ear, he said, I want you to understand this is nothing to do with us. This is a political stitch-up. They took the sound system, they took the trucks, they took everything we own. Seeing policemen waving and smiling, you know, it was a little bit sinister, really. <laughs> we were uh, charged with conspiracy. I mean, after they arrested us, we were two weeks on the steps of the police station and we had a protest. Two years that court case went on. It was one of the biggest court cases in this country ever. The jury found us innocent, all of us innocent of any crime. What have we done? We just turned up at a party. We discovered the Spiral Tribe was by heading for the exit and seeing how far you could go, suddenly you realise how you're not free. If I suspect that you've been involved in some of the offences that have occurred today... Suddenly you're getting hounded out of the country by the police. Then you would be arrested. Because you're talking about freedom, you know what I'm saying? And real freedom. Sometimes the worst thing that happens to you in life gives you the biggest revelation. Repression is one of the motors of life, isn't it? You know what I mean? And this is how do we react to that? That's why if you live in a comfortable existence, uh, you're less likely to feel that repression, which means you're less likely to move. Three of us were living in my van, which is like this big, and then we had a little truck that was about this big, and we had all the rig in that, and then someone would like either live under the cab or in the cab. We were feeling, yeah, this music is so powerful, it's so amazing. You know, let's just take it as far as we can. Let's just take it to as many places as we can. And then it all just kind of like took off. J'ai rencontré à Berlin tout cela. D'abord, c'était Paul Damerplatz. Quand le traveler, c'était entre les deux murs. Moins 17 dans un bus, la glace à l'intérieur de, euh, des vitres, euh, pas grand chose à manger, euh, le feu au milieu de la neige pour, pour se cuire euh, et tout ça. On n'arrive même plus à ouvrir les portes parce que c'était glacé.
La mission de départ quand ils étaient à Berlin, c'était partir sur la Russie. Euh, ceux de la traque qui étaient convoqués en Angleterre pour euh, Castle Morton, c'était ceux qui voulaient partir sur la Russie. Ils sont plus ou moins pas revenus à ce moment-là. Et nous, pendant ce temps-là, ben, on s'est organisé euh, partir sur la Tchécoslovaquie et faire le premier Tegnival en Tchèque. 250 km, 5 jours. As you would imagine, it was just a very slow moving sort of like a big uh, heavyweight convoy moving towards Czech Republic. And uh, there's a real nice atmosphere in that part of the world because you're somewhere between East and West, you know. And so you had all this kind of nostalgic feeling of like the war and, you know, uh, uh, all this thing between communist and sort of uh, uh, Western thinking. It was powerful because, I mean, every truck we had in those days was a, a classic oldie, you know. <laughs> all the paperwork necessary to get into check with these planes, um, to do like a, a spectacle. Yeah, one of the mutual trucks, you know, one on the back, you had flowers and fire juggling and driving around town and in the centre of Prague. We arrived there, we thought, fuck it, we can't set up here. There's houses everywhere. For Czech, you know, they'd never seen anything like that. You know, it was like just after the revolution. We, we like the feeling of kind of being on the edge and being a bit more experimental. It was the same with the music. To be able to give the opportunity to have new music played. We were always accused of just playing noise, you know, which is great. <laughs> Make some fucking noise, you know. But the fact is, is you can't boil it down to Spiral Tribe, you can't boil it down to Chicago acid music. What's that? That's life. That's the machine of existence. You're making contact beyond politics, and it's very powerful, very strong community, community area that is stifled by this society. What you're going through here is to inspire you, but after inspiration, you need to work. And if you don't do the work, you're going to go down the toilet, or you're going to get lost because you're playing with heavy chemicals, you're playing with heavy vibes, you're in a free zone in Babylon. Open your eyes and feel good.